rolling tanks in Europe, which once again bring even the computer muggles, the vulnerability of our digital infrastructure to mind are the reason for me to continue working on my chapters on secure communication. In the previous video of the series I already explained why less is more. In this video I would like to demonstrate a somewhat more practical solution that enables secure data exchange over the internet. In addition to the flow of information, data exchange also includes the control of machines, ranging from toasters to nuclear power plants. For the sake of convenience, the data is entered via a computer keyboard and no longer using a Morse button or a number keypad. The output is done via the mini screen with a resolution of 320 x 240 pixels as used in the previous video. Larger displays are of course also available. For this build I took what I had lying around, so the terminal is neither elegant nor small, but it works. Text can be entered quickly through the keyboard and read easily on the display with this terminal. But how do you transfer the entered text from one terminal to another via the internet? The connection to the internet is usually done via LAN, VLAN or modems and these interfaces are designed for a very large number of participants and therefore have to cover a very large number of eventualities which are written down in a very long source code. Anyone who writes a lot of code will inevitably introduce more or less bugs into the final software. Regular security updates even in relatively old transmission protocols prove this to be true. We are back to the old story that a tree with poisoned fruits is best hidden in a forest. The microcontroller is the safe castle in which trees are forbidden, so the jungle has to be kept in front of the walls. As a solution, the text to be transmitted is encrypted on the microcontroller before it is forwarded via USB to an internet enabled computer. A special program runs in the background of the internet computer which stores the encrypted message in a specified folder. In my case, the internet enabled computer is a laptop with Linux Mint as the operating system. If you want something more compact, you can use a Raspberry Pi. There are several ways to address the target system. I use emails as transport vehicle. The encrypted text is sent as an attachment with the mail. As soon as an email arrives, the encrypted attachment is saved in a special folder and thus transmitted to the second microcontroller. This transmission is also done via USB by the mini program running in the background. As soon as the microcontroller has decoded the message, it is displayed on the small screen. I use a very old encryption method on the Arduino Uno. The required characters are listed in a table and simply moved by a special number of positions. This was already possible in the days of a man who led a republic into dictatorship, Julius Caesar. The principle is very easy to implement in software, but this code is nowadays also very easy to crack. An extension of the method consists in not only shifting all characters by the same fixed value, but using a key word that specifies different position shifts. The longer the key, the trickier it gets to decipher the original text without knowing the keyword. With the appropriate computing effort, however, this can nowadays be done quite quickly in case the key is significantly shorter than the text sent. Deciphering becomes impossible if the text is shorter or at least as long as the stored key. Even quantum computers will not change that. However, that is only true if the key consists of a random distribution of all available characters. At least generating, storing and copying a very large key is no longer a problem with microcontrollers these days. 
The Arduino Uno used here can store a key of about 10,000 bytes in its memory in addition to the program. Keys with a length of several billion characters fit on a microSD card, so you can type until your fingers fall off without anyone being able to understand the message if it is intercepted. The card reader with the secret key must of course be inside our castle and so connected directly to the microcontroller. Messages encrypted in this way can only be read by people that have a copy of this key. The key exchange should therefore not take place over the internet, because if this byte sequence becomes public, you can as well write your messages on the outer walls of your house. Another advantage of encrypted messaging is that the original text cannot be modified during transmission. From a point where bytes have been inserted or removed, the text becomes unreadable. If bytes are overwritten, the corresponding passage becomes data garbage. Messages sent unencrypted are completely discarded by the microcontroller. Spam is automatically excluded, only group members with a suitable key can write to the terminal. The encryption acts like a signature at the same time. Neither the two PCs that are connected to the Arduinos on the start and target system, nor any computer in between on the internet can decode the message, only the start and target addresses, the time of transmission and the size of the file are known. It makes absolutely no difference whether some spyware from the KGB, FBI, NCC or some other curious earthling forwards and examines the data on any of these stations. The two microcontrollers communicate with each other without their message being read by strangers. The requirement is however that no sloppy work is done while generating and exchanging the key. Furthermore, the Arduino must be prepared in such a way that the code in the program memory cannot be overwritten and the key cannot be read from the memory. You can read more about these topics on my website. I can already hear the holers saying, why are you showing the terrorists how to hide their messages from KGB, FBI and NCC? Well, the knowledge shared in this video is known and deeply understood for many decades, at least outside of the computer muggle universe. So it just showed all the students in front of the screens how secure data communication can be set up easily and inexpensively with free open source software without a need for a subscription to any app store. In a world relying on digital data we simply need more people with a basic understanding of data processing and fewer powerpoint clowns or excel acrobats. And yes, if you have basic knowledge you can further automate the process so that the sending and receiving of emails takes place in the background without human intervention. In my opinion, operating nuclear power plants just to keep blockchains alive for secure data or virtual coin exchange is completely meaningless. When started parts of mankind to turn into this evolutionary dead end? My terminal runs with an electrical input power of just over 400 milliwatts, and of course, everything can be made even more compact and energy efficient. And if you are still waiting for the introduction of the really, really secure quantum communication, you should jump back to the first video in this series. For everyone else, there is. The build instructions, the software and further information are available on my website. In the source code of the software you will find a not really secret key with which you can send me a message on my terminal as soon as you have successfully made a copy of the project. And if you are too lazy to build the hardware, you will also find a step by step instruction on how to send me an encrypted mail through a Linux terminal albeit with less security against eavesdropping. And if you like the fact that I make that kind of basic knowledge available free of charge, you are welcome to click the donate button on my website. Many thanks to everyone who has already sent me an obel.
Thanks for watching and I'll be back.